This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, it's likable science on a Friday <laughs> afternoon, and you know what that means, Ethan Allen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ethan Allen. How about a shot of Ethan? <laughs> Ethan. Okay, he's a scientist. You can always tell, <laughs> and he's the actual host of the show. So uh, we're going to talk about drones as weaponry today, um, because uh, it was a really remarkable video that's been going viral on the internet. And we've seen it. We're not going to play it for you, but we're going to describe it, and you will go and play it yourself, <laughs> and then you will see what we mean. But first, we have a special story <laughs> from Ethan. Ethan, what's your story? Well, th this story it, it will seem to have very little to do with our topic, but it, I'll tie it back in later on, I'm sure. So there's a, a big aquarium that has dolphins, you know, and dolphins doing shows for people and all. So the trainers decided that they didn't really want to be bothered so much cleaning out the tank and all. So they trained the dolphins basically whenever something blows in the tank, lands on the surface of the tank, paper plate or a cup or whatever, if the dolphin will grab it and bring it to a trainer, the trainer will give them a fish. You know, pretty soon all the dolphins are keeping the tank clean, right? So then this one dolphin they found would grab, you know, a paper plate off the surface, take it down under, stick it under a rock, tear off a little piece of the paper plate and bring up a hand the trainer a little piece of the plate and get a fish. And then go down and tear off another piece of the plate and, call, and get another fish. Autonomous. And well, she, she basically had learned that you know this was the way to do it. So then at one point, she uh, a gull landed on in the tank. She grabbed the gull and took the gull to the trainers, who thought this was pretty cute, right? They gave her a number of fish, and she realized this was a big reward. So the next time she was being fed, and they gave them a number of fish, she didn't eat all her fish. She kept one of her fish, took it down, and stuck it under the rock in the bottom of the tank. Later on, she brought that fish up to the surface, let it sit on the surface. A gull came down to grab the fish. She grabbed the gull and got more fish, right? Then she taught her calf to do that. Her calf taught the other calves in, in, the, in the pod, basically. And now this whole pod of dolphins basically gullivates, you know? Uh, <clears throat> it, it's, you know, it's a nice thing. It, it's, People think, you know, the trainers think they're training the dolphins. The dolphins end up training the trainers. It, it's, it's a this, true story. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. This is this is yeah. this happened, and and it's the same kind of sort of escalation that we're talking about with these drones, right? You know, somebody develops a weapon that they think is the ultimate weapon, and somebody counters with the, the ultimate defense to that weapon, and you know, the, the race goes on. You know, so it's this okay. same kind of thing. I want to do a philosophical setting on okay. drones as weaponry. <clears throat> this is. Um, Hawaii in 1,000 years, that'd be 3017, 3018. <clears throat> First came the driverless car, then the age of AI. And as work went away with minimum annual living cost stipend, people didn't even have to try to make plow down uh, silly on shine. Work went away. The next century, the next century saw the eventual death of the multiplication tables. And in the aftermath, all electrical things shed their cables. We turned our lights with our thoughts. We drove to places in our minds. There were no real places left of any kind. Mm -hmm. All the days had just been too nice, and the Earth Party ran out of ice. An inductive reasoning became a thing of the past. There was no truth left for the press. What a mess. We are all homeless. That's by Dave Roth. Oh, okay. It does talk about <laughs> AI. In fact, AI is the sort of the um, you know defining part of this somehow, because AI is and you and I have talked about it before. Right. It's sort of taking over. It's 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 got such romance to it that it attracts all these programmers, mm -hmm. and a programmer who can do AI right out of the box is worth uh, you know hundred thousand dollars a year and climbing. Um, what is it about AI, and why is AI so central in drones as weaponry? Well, because uh, you, you want a device like a drone, ideally not just not to be tied to a person in the sense of having a person controlling it. If you can get a drone that can think for itself, you have a very powerful device on your hands, right? And when you've got, as video talks about, a whole swarm of these things that think for themselves but also stay in touch with the herd, 
then you've got something that is begins to really, uh, I mean, in a sense, you know, colonies of ants or hives of bees behave more intelligently than a single one, right? Even though each one has its own little brain, the hive or the, the colony of ants does things that the single one can't and makes decisions that the single ant couldn't. Uh, same kind of deal here. It's, it, there's sort of strength in numbers, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> well, it strikes me that, um, you know, when you have an autonomous vehicle, they call it a vehicle, mm -hmm. device of some kind, uh, by itself, it can only do so much. It can go out and right. do its mission and come back. It doesn't really have to coordinate much. But when you have a swarm, you have swarm technology, which is AI mm -hmm. gives us swarm technology. You can do, you know, oh, gee, multiples of that, logarithmic multiples right. of that. And so uh, what, what comes to mind while you were describing that, Ethan, is, is that you can have a swarm of many kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You can have a swarm of little things, and the drones in that video are, you know, two inches, maybe mm -hmm. three. Um, but you can have a swarm of any kind of little things. They could be on the ground only. They could be, mm -hmm. you know, in the water. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be almost microscopic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the natural progression of a, of a swarm is to effectuate a common purpose, mm -hmm. okay? And in humankind, that common purpose is more likely to be destructive than, you know, uh, uh, you know, constructive. I suppose you could have a swarm of robots that build a house. Mm -hmm. I've seen this without swarms. I've seen this with, mm -hmm. you know, autonomous devices that would build a house out of by, by pointing concrete at a certain places and press the, in Russia they do, right, yeah. you know, 24, we, houses, we talked about yeah, this. Yeah. Houses, yeah. um, so that, you know, you could also have a, a, a swarm of, of labor drones, and they don't belong to the union either, and they go out and build that house. They don't mm -hmm. have to be small, they could be bigger, and right. they could be all coordinated and build the house overnight. Because it's a problem because no jobs left <laughs> when you do that. But I mean, I'm just saying that a swarm connotes effectuating a common mission. Right, and in the, in the biological world, there are swarms called herds or packs or flocks, right, that typically are of more prey animals, and, and these swarms are sort of defensive. Uh, that is, they, they make it harder for predators to spot an individual animal and go after it, because if you're trying to go after one animal and there are a thousand of them around, it's very hard focus on the one, right? Yeah. And you end up getting nothing. Yeah. Um, and plus the swarm gives the, uh, the, the animals yeah, protection in that sense. There are, of course, pack hunting animals too. The, 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 uh, orcas, uh, the killer whales, hunt often in packs and, and have very coordinated. So do human beings. Right, and have very coordinated uh, attacks where they work together uh, and round up fish or knock seals off ice floes or what have yeah. you, you know. Usually it's aggressive though, isn't it? Something for, is well, aggressive. Well, for the, for the predators, yeah, typically it's yeah. to get food, but then for a lot of the prey animals are actually the ones that do much more swarming. You know, yeah. really. I mean, and that's the defensive, basically. That's the defensive, yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose in, you know, in the human experience, right now we're in phase one in the sense mm -hmm. that we're developing swarms that are predatory and uh, aggressive mm -hmm. and destructive. And I suppose the next phase will be to develop swarms that cope with that and that, uh, that are counter counter counterattack right uh, defensive swarms yeah and, and that kind of coordination too I mean it, go, it, go, it can go beyond that uh, for instance when you see geese flying in a V I don't know if you if you've looked close at geese flying in a V the, their wings are actually moving sort of in in a coordinated pattern and what they found is that the wings create turbulence and the geese the geese behind are taking advantage of that and they're beating the wings per perfectly in sync to take advantage of the turbulent flow. So, I mean, that's a swarm that's really designed for efficient movement. You know? Brilliant how nature yeah, could de saving design something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, it also reminds me of a peloton. When you talk about uh, your geese, um, the peloton, you know, you draft. You oh. draft the bicycle in front of you and you right. get in, in the V of his airflow. Right. And it makes your life easier. It makes, you sure. know, it's a benefit for you. You don't have to work as hard if you're in the, you're drafting in his airflow. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, working together, I mean, right. you know, you... What did Ben Franklin say? Somebody said, you hang together or hang separately. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and it's, it's, it's true. Uh, it's true in so many ways. But now we've learned to do it autonomously um, by remote control mm -hmm. or no control, as the case may be. Right. That's the that's interesting thing. Once you get the AI in this whole business and have turned over decision-making to some autonomous vehicle or vehicles, 
who's responsible for what they do? You know, I mean, yeah. the person who built them, the person who set them loose. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. But and the accountability sort of drops out of the whole equation, right? Well, I mean, worse than that, you can, you can uh, kidnap a bunch of, uh, and misdirect, and hijack a bunch right. of swarming things. And uh, turn them back on the guy who leashed, unleashed them in the first place. You know, it'd be tricky with the, on the ones on, the, on that video, right? Where they're all carrying little little shaped charges. How do you sort of grab them without having one of them <laughs> inadvertently pop onto your head? <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about the video. It's called Drone Weaponry, and uh, Ethan and I are going to talk over it now. We're not going to play it for you because it's already on YouTube, and uh, that'll that'll create a problem for us. So um, uh, this fellow is uh, uh, on a stage and he's describing it, and it, and he's got a, there's a picture of a drone watching him with a camera, and you don't know yet the size of the drone. You can see the drone; it's uh, it's small, but you don't realize that it's only like three inches right. big, and it's watching him. It's watching it's everything he does, and it lands on his hand over there, um, and and he's got a mm, he got a camera, and it's on his hand. It looks like a friendly insect. Um, it's got all kinds of sensors on it, and he's holding it so quietly you don't realize how dangerous it is. <laughs> and it's on camera, face recognition, shaped explosives. That's the part that catches your attention. Right. So now he's, he's just showing you how the drone will go onto someone's forehead, land there, it can do facial re recognition, and presto digito, it's got an explosive charge, and it blows that explosive charge into the center of the man's head and explodes the head, yeah. killing him. Um, <clears throat> this is pretty bad business. <laughs> well, yeah, if there's a glitch in the programming, right? Yeah, well, you don't want it on your head, and you may not have any time to get it off your head. Right. Like I don't, the yeah. ultimate bug bite, you know? <laughs> so now they got pictures of uh, people mm. using these as weapons, right. and he's, he's still, still standing on the stage in one of those tech presentations. Yeah, I couldn't and figure out whether that was actual real or simulated footage. I mean, whether yeah, it yeah. was from real... Actual yeah. use. He, he claims these things are available. Yeah, that makes you want to hop on Amazon right away and order them up, right? Before your just, before your friends just, and neighbors you know, do. A dozen or so, right? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, when they refer to drone weapon, weaponry in the title of this video, um, they're they're referring to one one kind of weapon. Now, so far, they're only talking about a small drone, although they have a picture here, oh, of a large drone, uh, of, as big as a you know 747. Right carrying, what, thousands, millions of these three-inch drones and dropping them uh, in the sky. They called it the X700K Liberator. Uh, there's some and, stats about it. And you can envision, you know, if you had some person who you wanted to get rid of, some bad guy, and all the drones would recognize him, and you yeah. suddenly release a few hundred of them or a few thousand of them What's somewhere in his do? vicinity, he's toast. He's toast, yeah. Like one or two but of them are bound to make yet, and I don't see... Yeah, <clears throat> he says, and he's talking about uh, not one person, but a group of people. Right. And all you have to do is establish the characteristics of this group, and each one of them will have a headache. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, how do you define that group? Well, he says in the, in the video that the, the group could be um, an ideological group. I'm not sure how AI can determine an ideolo right. ideological group, but, but I mean, that's the point of it. You, you could, um, yeah, you yeah. Could look for certain facial features, you could... For instance, skin color. You could look at yeah. uh, some kind of clothing they're wearing. You know. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah. Well, where they're located, what yeah, they're doing at the given moment. Right. Yep. Um, and and AI them. can do that because yep. it's got the sensors to be able to tell right. what's going on. You could have them set to, to only go after people with, with weapons, basically, who are displaying weaponry, basically. And right. Again, you know, the, right. The technology. So is, theoretically, if I went to Syria and I wanted to just get the ISIS guys, uh, there really wouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, they'd pretty soon people would stop carrying weapons. <laughs> they would stop carrying. They'd be very peaceful, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, no, they, this... they'd probably lug around IEDs. <laughs> <laughs> well, the drones could find the IEDs too, couldn't they? <laughs> I don't know. That, that's interesting. Uh, the, the whole that would require a different level of det detection, I it's, think. It's, you know? it's called a, you know the policeman at the elbow, except it's the drone at the elbow <laughs> is watching everything right. you do, and for that matter, watching your phone. I know your phone would be an open channel for them. Right. Uh, gee, I mean, everything about you would be known. You could be identified in almost no time. And if you were identified as somebody the drone was supposed to strike, you know, 
if the first drone didn't get you, the second one or the 27th one would get you, yeah. you'd be St. Sebastian <laughs> with, with these little... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is. And, and sort of that, that ability to come in so many sort of different ways, and, you know, locate you through your, your phone usage, through your appearance, you know, through your actions, through your... Uh, yeah. accoutrements. Yeah. I mean, you, you can use any of these, basically, or all of them, to, to go after someone. Who, who would have thunk? Yeah. You know, I mean, it was only, what, you know, 10 years ago when Barack Obama was using these things in, in, in Central Asia mm -hmm. and the Middle East. Um, now they've gone a whole new level. It's no longer child's play. It's mm -hmm. no longer just an assassination tool. Right. It's a way more powerful than that. And right after this break, Ethan, we should talk about what it means what it means for warfare, what it means for peacefare, what it means for you and me, the relationship of government and citizen. Oh, I get a chill down the back of my spine. Let's take a short break so I can recover when we come back. <laughs> okay. Ethan Allen and Jay Fidel doing drones for weapons. <laughs> hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Okay, we're, we're back, but I want to tell you, during the break, I got a telephone call on my Samsung Gear 3 watch, and Ethan didn't know what I was doing <laughs> talking to my watch. <laughs> it's an amazing watch. I just got it recently. I really it's love amazing it. amazing world. Make telephone calls right. like this, you know, walk around the street and on the phone. <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, I mean, the more you apply, you know, your imagination to these possibilities, uh, the more you can think of about how this could affect everything right. in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting that one of these first applications is in warfare and weaponry, when you think there's a lot more potentially positive uses, right? In being first responders in the event of emergencies and natural disasters, sure. right? Find people in. Right. Find people in buildings that have fallen down. Right. Find people on a field, on a battlefield even, mm -hmm. who have been wounded and, and actually fix them. Give them morphine or some right. other drug. Stitch them up. Who knows what? Right. Because uh, it's all trained and uh, you can program to do anything and send them off on a mission. You don't even have to identify exactly where they're going. They'll find their way. Right. Yeah. It's quite amazing. They're little people, <laughs> you know, and they're very powerful. Um, and, and, and there was a, I can't remember the name of the movie. It was a movie years ago and a book. About, about drones that went into your body mm -hmm. and would find bad things in your body and help Fantastic you out. Fantastic Voyage. Fantastic Voyage, right, yeah, right, that was, yeah, that was, and now that's uh, not science fiction anymore. That, no. That's probably a reality. They can make it three inches, they can make it, you know, a quarter inch too. Well, yeah, I mean, they've, you know, with nanotechnology, they've already got uh, certain kinds of nanostructures that, that selectively yeah. find tumors. Right, and, and, or way and smaller like than a quarter yeah. inch. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there are microns in, in yeah. size, you know. Yeah, so it's it's all that whole nanotechnology combined with the drone technology, right. and you really got something going. Yeah, yeah. The new the new element is the AI. The right. new element is putting a lot of intelligence on the head of a pin, right, and letting it go by itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the so what are the downsides on this? <clears throat> we mentioned before that you know if you send a swarm against me, I may be able to crack that code and send it right back against you. Right. Um, not easy, but it seems to me that this is logically possible, therefore it must be scientifically possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, there are lots of downsides, right? If, if these things, yeah, what, what happens if they sort of get lost and can't find what, what, they're, sort of what they're 
program to do? Are they, are they truly just going to sort of settle down in the middle of nowhere? And, and then if they do, I mean, is this going to be somewhat like the, the issue of what do you do with a bunch of mines when you're when you, you finished your war? You know, and, and mines just sit in the ground and they keep going off and keep going off and, you know, people lose limbs and kids are killed and blah, blah, blah. And so yeah, if you've released a swarm of 25,000 little drones each with a lethal charge, Maybe you can't recall them, or if you yeah. don't recall them, what happens? Where are they? You know, and then you've got yeah. twenty-five thousand lethal little charges sitting yeah. around. Yeah, the rebellion Where? of the drones. <laughs> well, yes. You know, <clears throat> you know, Hal. I can't do that for you, Hal. <laughs> 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 they may not listen to you anymore. I mean, they, by definition, they don't listen once you dispatch them. They're on their own. You're not in communication with these. Right. Drones. This is yeah. This is the whole accountability piece that, that begins. It's one thing to have a drone with a human operator sitting there controlling it, and the human operator is more or less responsible for what that drone does, because the yeah. drone is fundamentally stupid. But once, yeah, once you've sent them out in a, in a flock where they're on their own, huh, yeah. uh, Well, they could run out of battery juice. You know. On the other hand, I suspect that as time goes by, the batteries will be better and better, and right. the machines will be so efficient that the batteries last a long time. They watch the last two days. They'll have, they'll you know, have, it does a lot of things. Yeah, well, they'll have, there'll be solar and enhance solar, the that's solar sure, panel. solar, why not? Right. Sure, a little solar panel, right. quarter inch yeah. solar panel, drive the thing right. forever. You're scaring right. me, Ethan. <laughs> I'll put solar panels on their blades. You know? So now in the early days you know, of drones, the Israelis are so clever, they're so innovative. They came up with this thing with a rope. So you have a drone over here, say at 500 feet. Now you have another drone that's on top of it and senses that there's a drone below it. It drops a piece of rope mm -hmm. on the drone below. And the rope gets tangled in the rotors before you know it, the one below is, is dead and gone. Right. Um, and I, sus I suspect there's going to be ways to do that you know, going forward with the, the swarms, too. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, uh, some friends of mine were talking in the Netherlands, apparently, the powers that be there have trained hawks to go after drones. So if somebody's causing a nuisance with their drone, they just send the hawk up, and the hawk stoops down on it and grabs it and crunches it. But you can't do that with 25,000 of them. No, no. And you can't do that if the drone is programmed to shoot the hawk <laughs> out of the sky and then it touches it, you know, whoop, all finished. <laughs> right, yeah. This is very, very, <laughs> Low into a million very, pieces. It's very expensive in terms of hawks. So this is, going to change, this is going to change things. I mean, it seems to me that a, um, you know, a, bata a, a, a platoon of soldiers, whatever gear they have, they're not going to be a, a, an easy match. I mean, they're going to be an easy target for the drones. So I send 25,000 drones, drones against a, a, a dozen people, a yeah. dozen people on the battlefield. Yeah. I know who's going to win that. Right, yeah. You know, can't stop them. Right. So what's the point of sending the troops out? Right. You know, you have to find another way. Warfare changes. Yeah, it, it, it really does offer a, an interesting balance in terms of the cost-benefit ratio. What, what, what's a soldier's life worth, you know, yeah. and versus yeah. a bunch of cheap little drones? Yeah. You know? and the good news is that they they're so smart they they wouldn't necessarily destroy property. It's like what are you calling about the neutron bomb? Yeah, <clears> you know, neutron bombs, right. you, you know, decimate the population, but you don't decimate the city. Right. You know, and so when Trump, uh, you know, gets on the line with Kim Jong Un. He doesn't say my button is bigger than yours. He says my swarm is bigger than <laughs> my yours. Swarm is smarter than yours. <laughs> smarter than yours, right? And and the two so war is fought by proxy. You know that yeah. one swarm against right. another swarm, yeah. and boy, that would be better than any computer game you ever saw. Well, one one could hope. Yeah, you could you could at least you target. have a camera drone on the top looking down. You know, giving yeah. reports back sure. to the to the commander in the battlefield. You know, what, who's winning? Right. Right. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I mean, this change, if it changes war, if the nature of war has changed, then that changes everything. Because it means war is a completely technological experience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's no longer blood and guts, really. It's something else. It's my drones against your drones. I don't know how, I don't know the metrics. What would the metrics be? Who wins that war? The one with more drones left? <laughs> <laughs> the ones who can march in because the, the drones kill the people. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's no defense left or something. Yeah, well, I mean, d does this t sort of reduce wars back to some fundamental level where it becomes over resources we need? I send my drones out to clear the people out because I want your land because my water sources have dried up, you know, and I need, I need your land, I need your water, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, oh, it's scary. Yeah. So the drones come out and a, they get a loudspeaker drone, and he's, you'll have to leave now. 
<laughs> if you guys don't leave so I can get the water, you're toast. Mm -hmm. So they leave because they know they've got no choice to leave. This is, this is different than any warfare or, or yeah. power play we've ever seen because it's by remote control. Oh, wow. uh, and then, you know, we haven't really talked about big drones, like the, the kind of drones they've been using in the Middle East, and, you know, big mm -hmm. bombs and all that. I think the little drones, you know, can come in and do one job, but the big drones can come in and do another job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you can envision with the, the putting these things to use in being first responders to an emergency. You would probably have a whole set of specialist medical drones, one to you know, stitch people up, one to uh, apply morphine, you know, one, one to do this, one to do that, you know, and, and one drone, there'd be a diagnostic drone, basically, a locator yeah. drone, diagnostic drones that kept yeah. Yeah. multiple flocks, yeah. all interacting, sharing information appropriately. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. And in that video, the viral video there, drone weaponry, the, 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 the aircraft that was dropping these thousands of drones mm -hmm. was itself a drone. Right. So, you know, it's sort of like the, the uh, Russian egg, you know, right, take, right. take one egg out of the other egg, there's right. rather smaller eggs, right. smaller right. eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you could, can, you know, and then, okay, <clears throat> we're going to let the aggressive drones go now, then we're going to let the medical drones go now, and then we're going to let the communication drones go now, right. and uh, you could control the whole society or destroy it mm -hmm. uh, as you like. Yeah. Yeah. Little things about that big. And, you know, when they get into the assembly line manufacturing technique, China will do well at this. Mm -hmm. Do not think that China is not thinking about this oh. very discussion. Oh, yeah. um, you could create these for cheap. Right. You know, a little chip about that big mm -hmm. and, uh, and a little drone and you get an assembly line and you could have millions of them. Yeah. Oh. Wow. And I, you know, I like the idea of going out for a walk on a lonely street, right, in a, maybe a neighborhood that was mm, dangerous, right. and my drones would follow me. <laughs> Go get them. Go get them. <laughs> oh, you want to fool with me? <laughs> Boom. Right there. <laughs> the problem is that at night, you know, you don't get solar power for the drones. They better have good batteries. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, the thing about it also is that it, it moves fast. Mm -hmm. This kind of technology moves fast because it's sexy. Right. Because they, you know, we're not the only ones thinking of these huge right. possibilities. And somebody with a lot of money, a government agency right. perhaps, is going to sit down and try to take advantage of this. Yeah, somebody will have a, a chemical cloud that they can release that, that these drones will screw up these drones. You yeah. know, they'll hit this cloud around you and fizzle out and drop to the ground. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, it'd be easier and more efficient. We're talking about efficiency. Instead of landing on your head, well, it could still land on your head, right? And drop the gas right in front of your face. Well, I was saying defensively, too. Somebody oh, will, defensive, will, yeah. will develop. So suddenly you realize the drones are on their way. You, you hit uh, your pack that releases a defensive cloud around defensive, you. So, so, defensive so, so the, something. Yeah, so the, the drones can't get at you. Or well, what is the defense, anyway? Well, um, again, you, you could presumably have, a, have a, a chemical that would either screw up their sensors, screw up their abilities to touch down, screw up their explosives, stop their rotors, whatever, I mean, you know. But you know, then you have the, may I say, the invasion of the mutant drones. <laughs> right. meaning, meaning that you change them every week. You change right. the in, intelligence, right. the AI on them, you change the, the code so that nobody can crack them so easily. You change the nature of the sensors. Right. Every time you find there's a successful defense, yeah, I mean, you know, is, you, you, is, it's that same iteration right, of exactly weapons. Right, that we're talking about with the dolphins at the start, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. It's just this sort of endless cycle of you're figuring out one game and somebody's figuring out how to better your game, basically, yeah. you know. Well, it's a good, a good side to this, Ethan, and that is when one lands on your head <laughs> and in, in that, you know, millisecond that it <laughs> takes for it to fire the explosive shell into your brain. <laughs> There's no pain. You're, you're gone so fast, you don't even know what happened. And just like us, we're gone so fast, we don't even know what happened. <laughs>